uh, I look forward to your questions now. And once again, thank you for listening. And uh, here we go. So please, fire away with questions. Whenever you're ready. Um, can you hear us, Terry? Um, Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, if uh, you'll press star eight, the callers that are on the phone line, put yourself in the question queue. And the callers are the, uh, the folks that are on the chat by uh, being online. You can type in your questions in the chat and we'll try to get to all the questions. Uh, first question we have comes from the chat, Frank. Uh, in using an EDP in a lower court, would it not be helpful to copy this as a notice to the Attorney General, Governor, and State Administrator of the court? Uh, that's, that's what happens by the end. So, so work it this way. If you send an, if you work in with an EDP to start with, and they honour it, and they collapse the CESCOBs and they give an accounting, and the, the matter is dismissed, that's fine. But if you start at the top, there's nowhere to go. <clears throat> the the point is, by the fourth deed, if there's dishonour, we are following up with a system called the Great Writs, and there'll be a Great Writ that comes at the end of that uh, process that kicks it up to the Governor and the Attorney General. Now, no one, I think, has got to the, the level of the fourth level yet on these, and I am working. And what I'm referring to is Article 112 from memory under the Covenant, Article 112 of the Great Writs. Um, so the answer, short answer is no, because by the fourth writ, we will be notifying the Governor or the Attorney General, or if you're dealing with a federal matter, the President and, of course, then the US Attorney General. Okay, thank you, Frank. Uh, would you have a uh, um, an order or basically an instructions that go along with those writs that tell which writ is used for uh, uh, a type of remedy or relief that's needed? Absolutely. And uh, just for, for people, um, I'm just mentioning something that I didn't talk about tonight, these great writs of justice. These great writs of justice are the only documents that I know of in history that will have three separate divine immortal spirits sealing them in a blood signature. And when they do that, you are actually creating the Trinity. You are creating a divine Trinity. Now, does, does people understand what, when you do that, what you're doing? To them, remember, they worship the Trinity, the unholy Trinity. So when you do that, you're actually bringing that force to bear into that document. Those great writs will have an instruction, they'll have examples, and uh, they will be one of the most powerful tools that we will have available um, at the end of these processes. And also to use for those of you that know or have people in prison. We will be using the great writ of habeas corpus sealed with three blood seals to begin the process of having people unlawfully imprisoned freed from prison and I mean that that's not some boast or claim it will occur okay great thank you Frank and the next question from the chat it was placed in early uh, quite a bit earlier um, one heaven states a member insurance bond is always 10 million credits please explain the confidence building measures that you have initiated to back this indemnity statement Okay, go and have a look at the covenant. Go and have a look at the creation of a supreme credit. Now, a supreme act by 100 spiritual members and that is the ultimate underwriting and the ultimate asset backing of the currency of Ucadia. There are six currencies, um, well, there's more than six, but there is the Supreme Credit that then underwrites the Universal Gold Credit, that underwrites the Global Silver Credits, that underwrite the six regional currencies, 
and those currencies that underwrite national currencies and then underwrite regional currencies. So go and have a look at that. There are Global Reserve Bank sites. You can go and see them, the globe-reserve-bank.org site and the others. But start with uh, the covenant reference to Supreme Credits. And if you're not satisfied after reading what are several hundred pages on this information, then by all means send us an email. Article 118, Treasury of One Heaven is the article to start. And also... Article 117, Supreme Units of Value. All righty? Okay, thank you, Frank. Um, we have a caller, uh, South Minnesota. I just unmuted you. Do you have a question? South Minnesota? Hello? South Minnesota? Hello? South Minnesota? Yeah, yeah. Not, not hearing them. Do you want to go to the next one and we can come back? Okay. South Minnesota, you'll have to put yourself back in the queue. Uh, next is South Texas. Are you there? Question? Yes. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I didn't get in on the first half of the call tonight, uh, so my question probably won't be relevant to tonight's discussion. But anyway... Do the de facto courts have actual awareness of the recipient trust number? In other words, does that mean anything to them? To, them? Uh, to a judge, it means a lot. Yes, it means it means a huge amount to them. Okay. Um, do they understand the system? No. <clears throat> do they even understand their own laws? No, they don't. But any judge that's a member of the Masons, any judge that has uh, studied or is 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 uh, big in the uh, the system, we'll see that number and immediately see that it has some significance. So in now, other words, if it's on uh, a correspondence, on an envelope uh, that's sent to their attention, that does mean, they recognize it and it does mean something to them? Uh, it, it, it means volumes to them. And, and I'll explain something to uh, very important. And so I'll try and do this really, really clearly and quickly. You must understand that the, the, the veil that hid their system for thousands of years has now dissipated. Have you seen that happen now? You see it's dissipated? Well, I'm... Um, or disappearing? Well, apparently so. From what I'm learning, I'm, I'm, I'm studying and trying to learn as quickly as I can. And so, yes, I have some perception of that, yes. Okay. The reason they have sustained their position for so long is that these people, look, a lot of people don't believe in magic. And, and, and I'm for one that, that believe that the essence of magic is the power of belief. It's, it's convincing you that someone has some supernatural power. And if you believe it, then in fact, it's a self-fulfilling process, right? Mm -hmm. So what, why I'm saying this is that for a thousand years, we've been a longer, we've been dealing with master sorcerers. And as master sorcerers, they have committed massive spells upon us and spellbound us. And now that's moved into their more modern systems of sorcery, which they call psychiatry, so, uh, economics and other things, where people are spellbound by money and spellbound by all these other things. But uh, the, 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 point, the point is this. You can't defeat a system of spells by simply going, I don't believe. You actually have to mirror things back in to cause those spells to mature and to end them. So the design of our number is designed to expose, the registry number is designed to expose their sorcery. Now they've already created their own system uh, based on three SESTA KVs, SESTI, 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 666. No one should be under the illusion that these people have not already tried to create their own magic system. But what we're doing is we're exposing their magic as being an absolute fraud. So I just add that in because I, I put that in the background. When people look at this, they have concerns. Please, everything we do is, is upfront. But understand we're dealing with people who are obsessed and addicted to that kind of twisted mental illness thinking. And given that getting them to wake up is a crucial part of what we're doing. Um, the number will mean a lot to them. So thank you. 
Uh, may I ask one other question? Yeah, please. Um, is it, it I, I on one of the previous calls, I was under the impression, and it may not be a correct one, that the best way to, the most, the most effective or appropriate way to deliver uh, uh, a deed poll is through the private side to convey that through the private side. Is that correct? Well, the reverse of, when you use the reverse of one of their documents, that is the private site. You are sending them this in the private site by using the reverse. You understand? The the reverse. Uh, the, the reverse of a document is the private side of a document. Okay. Is, are you talking about attaching it to the reverse side? Attach no. I, what you need to do is, is please go and have a read of the notes on the Ecclesiastical Deed Polls. Okay. Because that gives you all the instructions you need, and and the questions you're asking are covered by both the canons and the detailed information there. Is that okay? Oh, great! I'd rather do it that way. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Good on you. Thank you so much. Good on you. Um, there was, uh, while I'm waiting for Terry just to pick up the next next one, um, I can see people in the chat and questions. There was a question yeah. about warrants from Guest 30. Uh, the warrants uh, is part of administrative law. The next canon batch that's coming through are um, administrative law. Okay? All right, great. Thank you, Frank. On the uh, true bill that's uh, part of the EDP process, it has an acted at. The question is, would that be the court. Uh, can you read that again just so I'm clear? I wasn't quite clear. Sorry. On um, on the true bill yep. that's issued as part of the EDP process where it says enacted, E-N-A-C-T-E-D, enacted at. The question is, is does that mean, uh, is that the court? Would that be the court where you say enacted at? No, 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 it's an acted act. All you have to give is the enacted act the county uh, or an acted act wherever it was located. The, the, uh, it, the enactment is, a, is an identity in terms of the physical dimension in which it was enacted. Uh, remember, um, the, the bill has been, uh, is not a, it's no longer a draft. It needs to state that it has been brought to life and it's been enacted. So if I was issuing the true bill here, it would be enacted in uh, Sydney, uh, Australia, um, and if you want to get if you want to get really uh, smart, so that no one and you do that in proper case, by the way, or you do it in lower case, even better still, so that it cannot be regarded as uh, within one of their trusts. If you want to get, sorry, I was just going to say, if you want to say enacted act, you could use the location number of one of our trusts, because every every state and every nation is its own trust under our system, and you can go and get those numbers on uh, the register. Go to the Globe Union site or America's Union and search for your state. Call up the number. Uh, if it starts with a 93, bring it in and, and act it out and put that number in, and that's the location of uh, that state. Okay? Great. Thank you, Frank. All right, we have a question from Maine. Uh, caller? Uh Frank, Terry, thank you very much. Uh, a couple of different things. I cannot find where the issue of the Supreme Credits is located, article, whether it's in one heaven or whatever. And the other is where also are the issues about Articles 117, 118, because if I go to uh, Ecclesiastic or into the UK or into uh, one heaven, there's nothing that would tie to the 117, 118 that has uh, understanding. Oh, go to the covenant, please. There's a big picture there. When you go to the home page, there's a big picture. When you click on that, you'll go into the actual covenant of one heaven, and it's Article 117 and 118. Okay, do you see that? Mm, well, I'm, I've, I've been there already, and what I'm looking at is 117 and 118. The actual are called uh, uh, surety and seal. Uh, no, 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 you're going to the wrong place. <laughs> On the home...